Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your conversation. My name is Christian Leon. I'm the executive director of The Cell, the Community Enrichment Lab. The Cell's mission is to harness the intellect, resources, and ingenuity of the Uptown Innovation District to enrich our residents, institutions, and businesses. We work in alignment with the Innovation Partnership, looking for ways to materialize our collective vision for our community. The Cell began taking shape in 2019. We started by dedicating ourselves to deeply understanding both the many resources and the challenges of our district. While we had planned on focusing on mid and long-term initiatives to tackle some of our issues at the core, we had to shift really quickly to help our community through the pandemic. This led to the creation of the We Nourish initiative, which you're supporting through your presence here tonight. Our district's unique multicultural identity is showcased by the many family-owned restaurants that line our streets. We chose to help sustain these families and the many workers they employ, the food dis distributors that depend on them, the farms that depend on these sales, and in turn, the families in our area that are faced with aggravated food and security issues, all in one fell swoop. Crossover Church was a natural partner, allowing us to reach the many families they have served through their Love Our City initiative. And this is a perfect segue to Pastor Tommy, who's the perfect person to highlight the tremendous work being done by a network of organizations focused on providing invaluable support to our community and its residents. What's going on Uptown? How's everybody doing? Welcome to Crossover Church and welcome to the 2020 presentation of the Community Impact Awards. Come on, wherever you're at right now, come on, make some noise, like clap it up. Yeah. So listen, we do have some people that are live here in the building. Unfortunately, we're not able to gather everybody because the Innovation Gathering has so many people come to it, but we do have a small amount of people that are here today physically in the building. Uh, we have the Community Engagement Committee that's here at Crossover Church, and we have some of the winners that are here. Um, so we're going to cheer in here. You're going to hear us, uh, but we need you guys at home to light up the chat light up the comments and help us celebrate these amazing winners today. So a little bit about the Community Impact Awards. It's a collaborative effort between uh, the Tampa Innovation Partnership and the University Area Community Development Corporation. And it's intended to recognize um, organizations that have shown incredible leadership in building a cohesive community here in the Uptown area. And so this year, as you know, has been especially challenging for all of us. I mean, it's been tiring on the, the mind and the body and the spirit and all those things. Uh, I know a lot of us, we've just felt exhausted at times, right? And so it's been challenging. But you know what? It's shown the strength of our uptown community. I can think back earlier in the summer, there was hundreds and hundreds of us that gathered together uh, in the pouring rain on a Saturday morning early, and we walked down Fowler Avenue. We went up to the mall and we prayed together. And so it was just such a great time of unity. And so every Wednesday, there's hundreds and hundreds of meals that are being um, given out right, net, right here at Crossover Church. Uh, volunteers come out, donors come out. Um, there's lots of other amazing initiatives that are happening all throughout our district. So, I mean, Uptown has really come together and pulled together during this time. So super proud of you guys, it's been amazing. So, but because this year has been so much turmoil that's happened, uh, when our committee got together for the community engagement, uh, we were reviewing all the nominees potentially, uh, we decided to add an additional award to the mix. Um, this has been a year like no other. So for this year only, we're calling this special award the Uptown Resiliency Award. So tonight we're actually gonna honor four award winners instead of three. So I'm gonna need some help to do this, so let's welcome um, a couple of really special people here in our district, Tampa's IP Executive Board Chairman and Chief Development Strategist for Rhythm at Uptown. Come on, make some noise for Chris Bowen. And we got the UACDC Executive Director and CEO, Sarah Combs, and they're both gonna help with the presentation, so give it up for Sarah. So, you guys ready? Let me know that you're ready, come on. All right, all right. So we're gonna start by presenting the Community Catalyst Award. And this award is, is got a focus on a startup program. It can be a for-profit organization or a non-profit organization. It's intended to recognize an organization that's emerging in community leadership, inclusion, 
uh, and also um, ongoing growth and development. So this award can highlight a project by several partners or with one organization. So winners of this in prior years uh, were Casa Chiapas, Mort Community School, Well Built Bikes, and Lily Pharmacy. So give it up for some of the past people. <laughs> Amazing organizations. So joining them today for 2020, our winner of the Community Catalyst Award is Fuzzy Taco Shop. Come on. Yeah. So they have had their one taco at a time effort. And so when COVID first hit, uh, the restaurant industry obviously was severely impacted. And so Fuzzy's looked for a creative way to keep their workers employed while also at the same time supporting frontline workers uh, in our hospitals and other essential places. And so they came up with this really cool thing called One Taco at a Time. And, and I'm being joined by a taco over here. And so uh, contributions actually came from the community to help pay for the ingredients and the preparation of, of the tacos for these frontline workers. They actually raised over $40,000. Wow. And they partnered with organizations like uh, My Warriors Place, uh, Place uh, Fueling the Frontlines, and this innovative win-win initiative helped avoiding laying off workers, and at the same time, it boosted the morale of a lot of our frontline workers that were in the middle of COVID-19 by helping people. And so, um, so they even reached out to us at one point, and they said, hey, from Love Our City, you guys can make some gift bags. And so we created uh, close to 2,000 Love Our City gift bags that we helped them with as well. And so uh, Fuzzy's has also been one of the restaurants that's been contributing hot meals uh, to our We Nourish program. Every Wednesday here at Crossover, we've been giving away hundreds and hundreds of meals to that program from the cell. It's been awesome. So here today uh, from Fuzzy Tacos to accept the Community Catal uh, Catalyst Award is Ian Lieberman. Come on, give it up for him. So when we started this campaign, uh, it truly uh, started with one taco. Uh, we had some friends ask, how can we feed people who need food? We know there's a lot of people who are struggling uh, and we want to donate uh, just a, a meal. And that turned into $40,000 later, a massive amount of community partnerships, thousands of, of deserving frontline workers, children, uh, just hungry people that were fed with our food. Uh, and most importantly, it gave our staff through what was truly uh, one of the most excruciating uh, times in our hospitality lives. It gave us all purpose uh, and it gave us the ability to come to work uh, and to be able to afford to pay one another to do that work. Uh, it provided a sense of accomplishment for some folks that were truly struggling in their own personal lives and, and mentally. Uh, to be able to come and, and add value to the community like the way that they were able to and the way our people have is uh, it's been unforgettable uh, and we appreciate the recognition. It's not about the recognition, but uh, this certainly means a lot to our staff and our, and our crew. So thank you all very much. All right, so next we're gonna do the Creative Cooperation Award. So let me know if you are with me, type in the chat, I'm here for it. Come on, let me know you're still here, guys. All right, everybody in the crowd, where you at? All right. So this award has a focus on partnerships and community, and it demonstrates exceptional uh, collaborative impact between community partners and community members in Uptown. So winners of this award, they excel in all aspects of partnership, um, consistent communication, knowledge of programs and services, and they participate in community committees and events. Some of the winners of this award from the past have been Can Do, the Caribbean American Development Organization, Love Our City, hey, and uh, our, uh, our favorite Hillsborough County Deputy, Ashley Alvarez, uh, and Amrock Fab Lab. So, so give it up for some of the past people. <laughs> Amazing organizations. So the 2020 Creative Cooperation Award winner is, come on, give me a drum roll, come on. Put the little drum emoji on there, come on. Is Tampa Family Health. Come on, give it up for us. Yeah. Tampa Family Health, they were nominated by Ed Johnson of the East Tampa Community Redevelopment Area for their creative 
uh, collab collaborative efforts in partnering with community-based organizations and industry-leading experts to eliminate gaps in healthcare and provide critical wraparound service to underserved communities. So Tampa Family Health has also received a letter of support from Feeding Tampa Bay for their cooperation and their support in a healthier community. And so uh, I, I'm just excited to see even right here in Uptown, right on Nebraska Avenue, we got a new Tampa he Family Health Center going up. Uh, they're partnering with Mort as well. So Uptown is covered health-wise because of this amazing organization. So here to accept the award from Tampa Family Health is my friend, Harold Jackson. <laughs> Hello everyone, on behalf of our Chief Executive Officer, Sherry Hoback, our Board of Directors, all of the team members of Tampa Family Health Centers, we're, we're happy to accept this uh, recognition by uh, the Innovation Partnership. We're excited that we've got uh, one center under construction. Uh, by the end of this year, we should be breaking ground on another center that is just slightly west of Mort Community School. and. By mid-year next year, we will have uh, four centers servicing this community. So we're excited about that, and we're excited about our continued participation in the growth and accomplishments here in this community. Thank you. Now we're going to present the Corporate Changemaker Award. And this award actually focuses on the business sector, those who demonstrate exceptional collaboration for the benefit of the community. So winners of this award, they provide a notable contribution to design, um, development, and assessment of innovative ideas to move our community forward. And so some of the winning organizations in the past were Casablanca, Diamond View Studios, RD Management, and Florida Blue. And so for 2020, the winner of the Corporate Change Maker, come on, give me a drum roll one more time, everybody. <laughs> DTCC, the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. So DTCC was nominated by Feeding Tampa Bay. They've been a consistent partner with Feeding Tampa Bay and many others, and they've made a huge impact this year. When a lot of organizations uh, were not able to volunteer because of COVID precautions, um, DTCC stepped up. They helped distribute food um, to more than 3,500 families every week at Feeding Tampa Bay's mega pantries throughout the whole Tampa Bay area. Um, in addition to that, they've also supported with financial contributions. Uh, they've been very supportive at Mort Community School as well. So with us from DTCC is Jerry Reyes. Come on, give it up for him. On behalf of DTCC, I want to thank you for the nomination, for the award. We are very grateful and thankful. Uh, we look forward to making an impact for the remainder of 2020 and 2021. Thank you. All right, Uptown family, and finally, here it is. We're going to present this year's special Uptown Resiliency Award. And as I mentioned in the beginning, when the Community Engagement Committee, when we got together, uh, we, we were doing the review process, looking at all the nominees. And so this really stuck out to this because of the unique crisis this year. It's affected so many families everywhere. The work of this organization, I mean, it really shined. It showed the spirit of the Community Impact Awards in so many different ways. And so we decided to create this special category category just for this year and they even showed the spirit of cooperation so much they nominated um, one of the other uh, winners that you guys just met so the winner this year of the Uptown Resiliency Award is Feeding Tampa Bay yeah. Feeding Tampa Bay they were actually nominated by Glenn Brown Glenn is actually a member of the advisory board in addition Glenn works for uh, the Children's Board of Hillsborough County. And so Glenn really recognized the increased vulnerability of the impacts of COVID in the uptown community. So many families were struggling um, to have food and nutritious meals. And so, you know, between March 1st and August 31st, uh, Feeding Tampa Bay distributed over 1.3 million meals in the uptown area. And so us here at Crossover Church, we're grateful that we've been able to partner with them as well. And every week we've been a distribution site. And as a matter of fact, just yesterday, uh, we distributed close 
uh, food to close to 1,000 families right here in our parking lot. So it's been absolutely incredible. So here from Feeding Tampa Bay to accept the Uptown Resiliency Award is Kelly Sims. Show her some love. Thank you on behalf of Feeding Tampa Bay, of our board, and our staff that's been working so hard since March. We particularly want to thank Glenn for the nomination. As you think about um, us now taking what was 650,000 families a week that we were responsible for feeding, and now at the peak of the uh, response, we grew to 1.7 million families we were responsible for in that 10 county region. Uh, it's been a heavy lift, but we're so thankful for the partnerships of all various organizations, particularly Uptown, Crossover Church, and others who've made it possible for us to serve people in this area. Uptown area is very dear to Feeding Tampa Bay. Our very first um, mobile pantry, one that went directly into a community, was done in conjunction with UACDC. And so this is a dear area to us. And again, have a wonderful event and thank you again. All right, so congratulations once again to all the Community Impact Award winners. Please keep these awards in mind throughout the year. So when you see something amazing happening in Uptown, like take a mental note of it. When the nominations come around uh, next year, be sure to nominate them. So hey, we thank you for everybody tuning in and for all the stuff that you're doing in Uptown. We love you guys. Peace and God bless. At the onset of the COVID-19 crisis, the true value of an innovation community quickly became evident. So many of our partners and neighbors in Uptown quickly shifted focus like true innovators and responded with stealth and ingenuity. When um, things started shutting down in March, uh, we were actually contacted by uh, Michael Gwynn, um, who is a Department of Defense engineer and had uh, been contacted by others needing, they needed uh, face shields. He was contacted by, he's a biomedical engineer. So hospitals and, and, and um, healthcare workers were contacting him. It's like, how do we get the face shields? Um, and so he's like, okay, he, he had his own 3D printers. He set up his own uh, 3D print factory, uh, sort of like a mini factory in, in Seminole and reached out to me because we partnered on things before through, through Softworks and things like that and said, you know, I'm getting all these people now who want to volunteer to help 3D print shields. I can't manage the, you know, the printers and the volunteers. You know, can you help out? It's like, well, yeah, this is what we're made for. AMROC joined the MRG 3D Personal Protective Equipment Production Project and coordinated 25 external 3D printing volunteers and 50 personal small business and academic 3D printers to produce 200 face shields per week. Along with MRG 3D's other participants, the program delivered more than 6,000 face shields every week to frontline medical professionals at no cost to them. You know, COVID caught everybody by surprise, right? We've talked about it before. COVID's a great equalizer. It, you know, put everybody on the same playing field, but it also presented opportunities to, to discover where those challenges were and to rise to them. If you'd like to get involved in AMROC's continuing COVID-19 relief efforts, volunteer and donor information is available at amroctampabay.com. Meanwhile, at USF, 43 new inventions addressing medical and technological challenges presented by the pandemic have been submitted for patents and copyrights by faculty inventors. Perhaps the biggest invention to date is the 3D printed COVID-19 testing swab from USF Radiology, which is now used worldwide. Other prominent inventions from USF include the Shimmer Symptom Monitoring Technology, the eye distance system that monitors social distance in the workplace, Bullnose, an XP Prize finalist that detects signs of COVID-19 through smell, an N95 mask recharger, and the Molecule Air Pro RX, which was cleared by the FDA as a Class II medical device in April and is used in hospitals and clinics to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and other airborne pathogens. As of early October, there are 42 seed grant projects underway related to COVID-19, and about a dozen of them involve technologies that can be commercialized. Wow, that was an amazing video. And it really is testament to all the innovative things that are going on in our district. People coming together to solve big problems. You know, we have grown as an organization, both the membership 
And also now we're starting to see all this new development. When you come to our district, you're beginning to see the concrete and the steel, people and buildings coming together to build something really special. Look at this map. This map shows you over $2 billion in development that's taking place in the Tampa Innovation District. And that's the result of you. All the work you've been doing, our anchors coming together to build something special. And now, here are some updates on some of the major developments taking place in our district. Hello everybody, uh, and welcome to Rhythm at Uptown, uh, an innovation community development here, uh, just a few blocks away from the University of South Florida campus and our very uh, significant medical district, one of the largest in, in Florida. Uh, we're in a section of the old University Mall uh, building that we are calling uh, Rhythm Labs. Uh, and it's really the beginnings of a tech hive that is both uh, tech, but it's also community. And it's where community meets tech. And so we, we're excited about this area here. And if you'll see behind me, this is one of the first major elements of uh, Rhythm at Uptown and Rhythm Labs is the uh, headquarters for the Institute of Applied Engineering uh, for the University of South Florida. We're very, very excited about what they're doing uh, in, within the Institute. And we're so really uh, so glad to have them here with us uh, and uh, really be pioneers in creating uh, another type of tech community uh, and, and community, um, innovation community here in Uptown. So we finally have rezoning uh, and master planning approvals behind us for this 100 acre, uh, seven to eight million square foot innovation community development, which is really a mixed use walkable urban uh, community and city center. On campus coming up you're, over the next few months, you're going to see next month in November, uh, the groundbreaking for uh, the uh, Hub Tampa, which is a, um, a student uh, apartment project that is mixed use uh, and it is being developed in partnership with RD Management uh, and led developments being led by Core Spaces. And that will be approximately a 60 plus million dollar project uh, that will also have um, approximately 30,000 square feet of street level shops and other types of spaces uh, to, to begin to introduce that urban walkable street environment. Finally, you'll also see here in the next few months, the, um, our moving forward with the, the old JCPenney site uh, where we have done a considerable amount of surgical demolition and reconstruction and we're getting ready to do an adaptive reuse of the remaining steel structure uh, and concrete floor system and we'll be developing a Class A uh, office and research project that is mixed use itself, both externally on a new urban street uh, that moves and comes into the building itself uh, and creates a main street uh, inside the building. Common theme to all the, the projects that I just outlined is the community. This is a way to bring the community together on site and to do really great work together all the way from, from uh, anything from arts to sciences uh, and community development and uh, to really start a, a lot of groundbreaking projects here but then take those projects off site into our neighborhoods, into our community and, and throughout Tampa Bay. So we're very, very excited that uh, we're finally able to, to break some ground, do some significant ground up projects, but also adaptively reuse portions of the mall uh, that's been here since the early 70s to adaptively reuse some of those pieces in very innovative and very exciting ways. My name is Tim and I'm the founder of Diamond View Studios, a video agency here in Tampa, Florida. Our current office is in the university area, not too far from where Rhythm at Uptown is right now. We've been hearing about Rhythm for years now, but it wasn't until I went over there and really saw it that I, that I saw the vision that Rhythm has. To be not only a community player uh, here in the university area, but to be a big player nationwide. But when I think about Rhythm, it's all centered around innovation, and that's the kind of company that we want to be. So we, we just launched our new studio, View by Diamond View, and it's an all LED volume. It's an exciting time because LED volumes around the nation 
are now taking the place of traditional green screen studios. When VIEW launches, it's going to be the largest LED volume in the world. And we're excited to have that technology in our backyard and the opportunities that will bring us, but we're even more excited for it to be at rhythm and that we can share this with the university area. So thank you IP for making this happen and we look forward to our stay at Rhythm at Uptown. Good evening, everybody. This is Jack Koloski from the Moffitt Cancer Center, and I'm pleased to tell you about some of the developments that we have at Moffitt going forward that support all of our goals and objectives in the Innovation Alliance. First, we have developed a new clinic support building, building of about $80 million in total cost um, that houses our clinical labs, our many of our faculty members, and our administration. And you can see some of the pictures here associated with the interior design, which is both functional and efficient for all of our team members. Next, I'd love to tell you about the new hospital groundbreaking that occurred in the month of June and is well underway. Here you see some pictures of our board and a picture of what that new hospital will look like. Uh, moving forward, you can see the hospital as it is under construction just a few weeks ago. Um, by the time you may drive by it uh, tomorrow, you may see some additional floors on that building going forward. It's been designed to think of that campus over in the McKinley area as a total campus of inpatient surgical hospital beds outpatient surgical hospital um, beds, as well as clinic. And further expansion is underway. This total project is about $400 million in total cost. Combined, all of our efforts in terms of our investment in this general community is somewhere in the neighborhood of half a billion dollars. This hospital has been designed with the patients in mind. So. The idea was is that we had our patients help us design that building so it was functional and useful to them as well as to the faculty and staff that will be working there. We have a, a spacious lobby, a, a lot of things going on there in terms of technology um, that will be developed with the idea that we'll be opening in July of 2023. And believe me, that time will go by very quickly. Last but not least, I want to introduce our new CEO who wasn't able to join us today, but his name is Dr. Patrick Hu. And he comes from the MD Anderson Cancer Center. And he is a world-renowned researcher, clinician, currently the leader of their division of, of medicine but he will bring a lot of strengths um, to the Cancer Center and a lot of vision and energy. And so we'll welcome Dr. Hu on November 10th, just a few weeks from now. So again, thank you for joining us and we'll look forward to your continued support of the Tampa Innovation Alliance. My name is Bruce Burgum and I'm the Senior Executive Officer for Acute Care Services here with the U. Westwood Division of Advent Health. It is my uh, pleasure to be with you tonight to share with you some information on a uh, very large construction project that is happening on our Advent Health Tampa campus. So some background information on our campus there. The hospital was opened in 1966. It is licensed for 536 beds. Uh, we see over 24,000 admissions. We have over 110,000 emergency room visits that we serve. We have over 1,400 medical staff physicians that uh, provide care to our patients. We have over 3,200 employees. Uh, included within that, we have over 1,000 RNs that uh, serve the patients here within Advent Health Tampa. The project is a $256 million investment. It will be a six-story patient uh, surgical tower. It will include uh, 96 private uh, patient rooms. We'll also have a 24-bed critical care unit. 
There will also be uh, 24 operating rooms, state-of-the-art, large operating rooms. Uh, initially, upon opening, we will create 100 new uh, jobs. And uh, by year five of this project, we anticipate that the employee base there just for this project alone will grow by an additional or a total of 500 additional clinicians. So what you have here is we're looking at the project from Bruce B. Downs back toward the courtyard there, as I'm calling it. Uh, some renderings of what the interior will look like uh, up in the upper left hand portion of your screen, you will see the uh, a sample patient room. You can see some of the lobbies here on the right side of the screen. And additionally, the project will come with a auditorium that uh, we can certainly offer to the community to uh, use for appropriate uh, meetings. We are excited to, to expand and improve the quality of care and the um, and the uh, level of care in the community with this project. We believe that this will be a tremendous opportunity for us to recruit uh, high-end surgical um, professionals. And uh, again, in elevating the, the quality of care and the scope of care that we offer here from this campus. Hello, my name is David Van Meter. I'm the Interim Medical Center Director here at the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital and Clinics. Since 2013, I've held various leadership roles in the Medical Center, and if asked, I'd use two words to describe Team Tampa. The first word is modernization, and the second word is expansion. You may not know, but Hillsborough County has more veterans in this county than any other county in the state of Florida. And in recognizing that, we opened the South Hillsborough Clinic in 2017, affording a new clinic for our veterans to receive care in our footprint. In addition to that, we've got plans to expand all of our outpatient clinics, all five of them, by 2024. The crown jewel of our expansion is the new bed tower project outside. It's the fourth phase of a four phase project for $250 million, which provides 96 inpatient med surge rooms, individual rooms, and 40 individual ICU rooms for our veterans. It's the latest in a long, forward-looking ventures, including our pilot whole health program, polytrauma care, spinal cord injury care, robotic surgery, and artificial intelligence. In 2017, we acquired our first DaVinci robot. We used it so much that in 2018, we acquired a second DaVinci robot. And last year, we had more robotic surgeries here in our robotic surgery program than any other VA medical center. More recently, our pathologists have used artificial intelligence and machine learning to better quickly diagnose cancer in our veterans. And in the age of COVID-19, we're actively participating in a convalescent plasma study in better understanding the threat of this disease, not just to our veterans, but to the nation as a whole. We're excited to be anchored amongst some other leaders in our community. The Uptown District has esteemed neighbors like USF, Moffitt, Advent Health, and Bush Gardens. And we're very, very proud to be part of that group and not an island unto herself. Thank you for your continued support and partnership and advocacy for the Uptown District. The future is bright. Hi, I'm Allison Madden, Director of Operations for the USF Research Foundation. I am so happy to share with you today an update on the construction of the new research park building that you see along Fowler Avenue at Spectrum Boulevard. At the very heart of our innovation district, our goal has been to create an iconic structure that not only advances our community's research capabilities, but becomes a gathering point for our innovation community. While COVID-19 has had a tremendous impact on USF, the pandemic did not stop research. In fact, in many ways, it has accelerated the pace of research and innovation. For our research park, that means that there is more need than ever for laboratory space to bring these ideas to fruition. We are on schedule to open in the fall of 2021, and we are grateful to the crews who have kept working throughout the past months to bring the incredible design vision to life. And in coming months, you will see the structure begin to rise. Our brokers, CBRE, are available for any inquiries from potential tenants. The USF research community looks to this new building and the other projects throughout the Innovation District as testaments to our shared determination and optimism for the future. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Combs, and I'm the CEO here at the University Area CDC. And I'm so excited to share with you several developments that we have happening 
in the Uptown University area community. Uh, but I'm only able to share one of those with you today, and that is our development number two, Uptown Sky, which is our multifamily housing development, which we're so excited about. Uh, this development is on 12th and Fletcher, right in the heart of the university area community. And we're excited that we're partnering on this with uh, Blue Sky Community. Sean Wilson and I have been working on this for uh, nearly three years. So it's been a, a labor of love. And we're so excited to share with you that this project is coming online. Uh, this is the rendering of what it will look like. Um, it is a low-income housing tax credit project. And uh, we are so excited that 60 families will be able to call Uptown Sky home. And what is unique about this project is that the bottom floor will be uh, available for UACDC programs and services. So we're so excited about this. And uh, most importantly, we're excited because the project has been funded. So we've been able to get $5.82 million from uh, Hillsborough County Affordable Housing through the HOPE uh, initiative and then we were able to pair that money with a 4% tax credit uh, enabling us to be able to put this nearly 60 million dollar development together which is really exciting uh, and you know at the bottom uh, the end goal in mind is homes for 60 families so very excited to share this information with you and look forward to sharing with you uh, the additional development projects that we have underway here in the Uptown University area. Hey Jen Yingling here since 1999, when we first began brewing Yingling beer in our Tampa brewery, we have considered Tampa and the community at large to be our second home. Our vision for the Tampa project is to build upon our affinity for the community and to create a first-class destination that helps us tell our unique story of America's oldest brewery. As consumer interest in locally crafted beer continues to grow, we look forward to giving consumers the opportunity to experience our rich history and unparalleled portfolio of beer brands. We're excited for the development of this project to continue and to re-envision the Yingling experience in Tampa. This new development helps us not only offer visitors an enhanced brewery hospitality and entertainment experience, but to become a more integral part of our Central Florida for our employees, local residents, and visitors. Our campus is uniquely positioned within miles of popular South Florida destinations, including the Tampa Waterfront, University of South Florida, Amelie Arena, and Bush Gardens, which attracts 4 million visitors per year. In addition, our brewery falls centrally in a development zone, the focus of this region's revitalization efforts, and also around the city's leading education, technology, and entertainment enterprises. We're excited to be invested alongside such innovative organizations that have a bold vision for the future of Uptown Tampa. And we look forward to making a positive impact on the entire Tampa community. As we continue to embark on this exciting new venture, fans, visitors, and residents of the Tampa community can look forward to the new campus featuring exciting new areas like a new brew pub, beer garden, conference space, and a museum. We look forward to sharing more as we move further along in the process. But one thing is for sure, we are here and committed to investing in the exciting future of Tampa. Hi, Greg Pauly here from the City of Temple Terrace with a quick update on development around town. First, located in the heart of our redevelopment area, at the southeast corner of 56th Street and Bush Boulevard, work is underway on the fountain shops of Temple Terrace. This project will include five freestanding buildings and provide commercial space for shopping, dining, banking, and professional offices. The developer, Mr. Jared Moon of the Paragon Property Group, broke ground in early October by first taking down the old fast food restaurant that previously occupied the parcel. In addition to creating some wonderful commercial spaces, the developer will also build a landmark fountain tower right at the corner adjacent to the intersection. Next, just to the east of the Fountain Shops project is the Waverly Terrace Luxury Apartment Home Community. This project broke ground in February and is now well underway. The developer, Mr. Ely Banks of the Richmond Group of Florida, is building a top-notch project that will include 200 Class A residential units with high-end finishes and amenities. A little further south, just on the other side of Chicago Avenue, a third developer is planning to redevelop an old, broken-down retail building and give it new life as commercial space for boutique shops and dining options. The developer here is Mr. Bhavandeep Singh of Enigma Realtors. Next, we have more commercial development underway along Bush Boulevard, a block to the west. The developer, One Oak Development, 
is in the process of redeveloping this parcel into retail space for an automotive parts store. And finally, the biggest project currently underway in Temple Terrace is located two and a half miles east of the redevelopment area in our industrial park area near Highway 301. Developer Paul Seafried of Seafried Industrial Properties broke ground in August and is building a state-of-the-art distribution center for Amazon. This project will create 2.9 million square feet of high-tech industrial warehouse space and add more than 750 new full-time jobs to the local workforce. This is truly an exciting time here in Temple Terrace for development. Thank you to Eddie and the entire team at IP for allowing me to share this update. Please remember to stay safe and healthy in all that you do. Thank you. Let's take a moment to thank all of our sponsors. Florida Blue, our title sponsor. With the help of Tico, Bush Gardens, Kimley Horn, Dallas One, Tucker Hall, Shoemaker Loop and Kendrick, Crossover Church, and of course Diamond View. Thank you all for helping make Innovation Gathering 2020 possible.